Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 21st of January 2022. And the title of this episode is Banning Your Favourite Game. As If Productions is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by our patrons. And I've sent our questions over to Todd at As If, and that's the good news. The bad news is, like always, it takes a week to get in touch, maybe a week to agree on some ground rules and send the questions over. And that takes us halfway into the month. It's not much time to come back with answers. Now, you know the process. It's great if we get to feature a Q&A with Todd in the Spotlight article, but we will push on regardless. And if necessary, do a follow-up and standalone post in the spirit of better late than never. Now, tracking down interviews, writing reviews, and watching out for geeky news is how I spend much of my time. I do get to watch some Netflix too, and Just Watch sent over their 2021 data for the US and UK across all streaming platforms, or at least the major ones. And what do you think the top three movies across the sites that Just Watch track are? Well, in the US, in third place, it's Wrath of Man. That's with Jason Stratham as an angry truck driver. Well, there's a twist. And Wrath of Man wasn't even in the top ten in the UK. In the second place, in the US, it's Zack Snyder's Justice League. You know the story there. DC's angry superheroes, or for legal reasons, metahumans, coming together in a really long edit of the movie. I've not seen it yet, and it was 10th in the UK. So, in first place, in the US, it's Nobody, with Bob Odenkirk, Connie Nelson, and RZA, about one angry dad. And Nobody was third in the UK's list. In the UK, first and second place went to A Quiet Place 2 and Godzilla vs. Kong. I've at least seen Godzilla vs. Kong. Of all the others, which should I watch, if any? And do you know what? It's good to have the choice, right? Let's talk about China. Reports, which are, you know, impossible to verify, are that the Chinese authorities are starting to regulate LARPs and mystery rooms. It's not because LARPs might be training for all sorts of covert activity, although that might remind you of Hawkeye. It's because the authorities are worried that many of these games feature the occult and the supernatural, and the state isn't keen on that, and they're not keen on the idea of mystical Tibet or anything that might loop back to that sort of thing. What if somebody was pushing to ban your favourite game? China's regulation of games is hardcore and not surprising. It's also genuine. It happens. It often comes to mind when I get weird comments on the Geek Native blog from insecure people in the West who seem to think the authorities will kick down their door and take away their red box D&D or make them play a lesbian in a Powered by the Apocalypse game. I mean, that's daft, of course. And the truth is, there's a whole range of games available. Later this year, a game from Japan is coming to English-speaking markets and it is undoubtedly controversial. It's the Goblin Slayer RPG. That's based on an anime that begins with some edgelord scenes of strong and graphic sexual violence. And if you don't know they're coming, the scenes ambush you as the goblins ambush the rookie adventurers. Afterwards, the anime becomes much more traditional and calms down. It is available on mainstream platforms like Crunchyroll. I totally get why people don't think an anime like that needs an RPG, and why they don't want a game like that in their home. I also doubt that it will go anywhere near that level of shock value, but I may be proven wrong. It's on pre-order in Amazon, which rates it at 15+. plus. I think there's a lot to unpack there. There's one thing about representation and diversity, and another thing about the violent content of games. They're related, but not the same. I suspect we'll spend much of 2022 talking about it, as we should. I don't want a return to the comics code, but I do want a better society, and I think we get a better society through action and leading by example. There's also called hard cash on the table. Activision got its culture wrong. It didn't do well enough with its corporate society. Now the game giant will be bought for nearly 70 billion by Microsoft. I wonder how much more that could have been without the public outcry. 
I wonder if Microsoft could even have bought Activision if it had not been for how poorly the game's publisher seemed to have acted in some situations. 70 billion is enough to kick world hunger in the teeth. It's enough to make progress to net zero as well. It's an amount of money that I struggle to get my head around. Activision isn't just Blizzard and Call of Duty. It's also King and Candy Crush. This is a mobile play as much as it is an Xbox power-up. And while we can't see the trees for the hype yet, it will also be a metaverse play. I don't think the Goblin Slayer will affect Yen Press's finances, although the company can't afford to flop. I do think the integration of Activision and Microsoft will be felt in share prices and in pension funds. Of course, not all games cost money. The community of fans around Hero Games as champions have put together several generous products in a single free download called Champions Begins. The only bad thing I have to say about Champions Begins is it's another contender in the small menu of options for where you should begin downloading or buying all the content you might want for playing Champions. And there are decades of books now for the superhero RPG. The point is that Champions Begins helps people start and there are several books in that download designed to help you onboard people into the game or onboard yourself. So if you're even slightly curious about the hero system, then I think it's worth checking out. It's another example of a game not being banned. Hero Games didn't say, no, don't do this. They said, thank you, let's help publish it. There's more. Another example of games getting made and not banned is Demon World. I think Ralph Partha Europe has the rights, but FASA was pushing the third edition of Demon World, and now FASA have announced a fourth edition of the Fantasy War game. I think that means the proposed RPG of Demon World has been lapped, but perhaps momentum will carry both projects forward. It's also interesting to see how Ralph Partha seems to be quite happy to backseat themselves and let FASA lead the charge. As long as somebody is shepherding the game, right? I mean, Nightfall Games are shepherding the Stokerverse RPG. We've seen the cover for the game, which was shown first by the Stokerverse authors, and then later clarified as the Quick Start cover by Nightfall. It means we'll get the digital edition of the Quick Start on Drive-Thru RPG next month, probably costing a few dollars, and there will likely be a Kickstart later for the whole tabletop. I can't say I'm doing amazingly well in reining back my Kickstarter spending, I backed a skull. It's a, a pirate skull dice tower, and it comes with the wooden ball, but not the costume, I think, that features in the video, and it's that that makes it look so cool. I don't even have somewhere to put it, but I do aspire to a corner table, and despite it being a dice tower, that's what I have in mind for it. So, yes, a future skull for a future table in less than optimal location, but I'm still happy with the shock value of having a black skull in my living room. And lastly, there's only one bit of bundle news, but it's a two-for-one, as there are collections of the first and second edition of Palladium Fantasy over at the bundle of holding. And on that note, let's wrap there, look after your skull, and see you next week.